Hi, I'm Jacob Blizzard, board certified criminal law and criminal appellate law attorney here in Abilene, Texas. Uh, my passion is seeking freedom for those who've been incarcerated, either wrongfully or uh, overly sentenced. And so I, I love seeking freedom for those individuals. And um, I provide these videos because I want to speak to you guys about what you can do to seek freedom from prison and uh, get home to your loved ones. So today I wanted to talk to you about the federal writ process. So basically, when you think about the writ process in general, you've probably gone through appeal if you had an appeal. Then from there, you would have filed a state uh, 1107 writ of habeas corpus here in the state of Texas. That has been denied. Now you're looking for your next avenue. What can you do from there? Your next avenue is to pursue a 2254 petition for writ of habeas corpus in the federal court. Uh, sometimes it's called a, a petition to vacate sentence or an application to vacate sentence or a motion to vacate sentence. They're all essentially the same thing. You are seeking relief from your conviction. Now, 2254 is used when you are in state custody, meaning you stood trial in a state of Texas court. You didn't stand trial in a federal court. You stood trial in a state of Texas court. And then you have already gone through the state process the state writ of habeas corpus. You have to go through that first. And the other key thing about filing a 2254 petition is that you've got to file that within one year of your conviction becoming final. So that's at the end of all of your appeals, and then there'll be some space between the end of your appeals and filing your 1107 petition or application. And so that clock begins to run whenever your direct appeal is finalized, and then it stops when you filed that 1107 petition. And then when your 1107 petition is denied, it resumes. And so you have one year to fit it within that time frame. So a little bit before time, during the 1107, doesn't count against you, but once the 1107 is denied, you have one year to file. If you do not file within the one year, you will be time barred in the federal court will not entertain your writ at all. The 2254 petition is unique because you can't assert new grounds. You can't come in and say something like, you know, I've thought of something new. I want to assert a new ground of ineffective assistance of counsel or a new reason for ineffective assistance of counsel or prosecutorial misconduct, whatever it is. You are having the federal court review the actions of the 1107 court. So for our purposes here, it's the Court of Criminal Appeals in Texas is being reviewed by the district court uh, where you file that 2254 petition. So the 2254 petition is saying that the state court has so departed from standards of jurisprudence that uh, they are not following clearly established Supreme Court precedent uh, that should be applied to your case. It's a high standard. It's a tough standard, but it's one that can be met with the proper work, research, and uh, approach with the federal court. Now, if you get ultimately get denied in the 2254, uh, you wind up uh, trying to appeal that to the Fifth Circuit. But the, the way that the courts really look at this is uh, the district court is supposed to be your one real shot in federal court. The You have to get a certificate of appealability to appeal it to the Fifth Circuit. And so that uh, requires getting three judges from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals to approve your appeal to them, to the court as a whole, to review your petition. Then from there, again, it's Fifth Circuit granted review and reviewed it, and then you were unsatisfied with the Fifth Circuit's resolution of your case. Then ultimately you would petition for writ of certiorari review in the United States Supreme Court. Uh, those are exceedingly rare. Uh, the petitions to the United States Supreme Court and to the Fifth Circuit are, are rare as well. Really, it's that district court level where you get a real shot at the federal court deciding whether or not the state court applied uh, the law correctly in your case. So that's federal writs for this time. In another video, I'll talk about if you are in federal custody and the federal writ process.